In this video I'm going to solve one of the practice exam questions uh, for Ralph's part of the econometric methods course. Here's the question. So it starts out with a um, regression model. That regression model has a dependent variable y, task k, explanatory variables which are all collected in matrix M and a uh, coefficient vector gamma. Uh, importantly, and that's an important piece of information, M and U are correlated with each other. So, and, and we have an instrument matrix set. So, part A of the question, explain why it is not advisable to estimate gamma by OLS. So, let's firstly write down what the OLS estimator here is. It will be M prime M inverse m prime y. Okay, that's just the standard OLS estimator. And our usual trick when we want to establish properties of this estimator is that we replace y uh, with our uh, regression equation. And that's not uh, z, and that's of course important here. It's m prime inverse m prime and now our regression model is m gamma plus u and uh, here we eventually find that this is and we simplify it to this m prime u okay so this is our uh, our s estimator and if we for instance we can ask the question is gamma hat unbiased question mark to uh, to figure this out what we need to uh, establish is what the expectation of gamma hat is now, usually we would possibly do that conditional on M, that depends on the properties of whether M is random or not. Let's assume it is random, it's not specified here, so you could leave it as uh, the conditioning on M as well uh, away. Uh, but let's do that. Now the expectation of uh, gamma is, of course, just gamma, and then plus the expectation, we'll have a big square bracket M prime, M inverse M prime U. Uh, this guy here is supposed to be just a constant term or in probability limit it will be constant so we're going to get that out. Oh and I forgot I forgot the conditioning on M so we have M prime M inverse expected value of M prime U conditional on M. Now it, the important piece of information is, of course, that U and M are correlated. So, with that bit of information, what we do know is that this bit is unequal to zero as M and U are correlated. And that implies that the expected value, let's repeat that here, of gamma hat conditional M is unequal to gamma. Okay, so and uh, therefore, if we were to estimate gamma by OLS, gamma hat would not be an unbiased estimator. Okay, so that is part A solved. So let me now just uh, copy in part uh, B so we can see the, uh, the question. 
explain the steps involved in obtaining the two-stage least squares estimator of gamma and also outline which properties the instrument matrix set should possess. So, this, of course, to answer this, you need to know what it means, a two-stage uh, two least squares estimator. And uh, we discussed that in, in the lecture. So, the first step, first step is regress all elements in M on the instrument rate matrix set matrix set. Now this is really I said I said here all elements. You could alternatively say all elements that are suspected whoops that are suspected to be endogenous endogenous so th this step is really only important for all those elements but in doubt it's going to be all but perhaps for the uh, for the constant but you could actually treat the constant just like any uh, like any other Variable. So, what we uh, what we will get from this is a matrix M hat, where each column column of M hat contains the estimated value of the uh, respective variable in M. So let's just write this down. I, I think in, in, in terms of the exam that would be enough for me if you were to write this down. I understand what it means regress all elements, but let's do it a little bit uh, more carefully here. So M is really consists of I think is it K? Yeah. K elements. Okay, now each of this little, uh, this M1 is now an n by 1 vector of the first variable, and M2 is again an n by 1 vector of the second variable, and so forth, and that is n by 1 as well. So altogether we get an n by k matrix. Now, of course, that M1 will usually be a constant. So what we then do is for and so this is now more detailed, as I just mentioned, as I would expect it in the exam. For the M1, we will run a regression. M1 is a function of all the sets times delta plus, let's call, let's call it uh, delta 1 and an error term v1. So we run this regression. If you run the regression, we get an s by all s. We get an estimated value for this parameter vector. Of course, also we get an estimated error term, and we can get an estimated value for m1. And then we do the same for m2. So again, we run that on all elements in set. Delta 2, oh, no, already put the hat on there and an error term. So once we estimate that by all s, we get, we can write this down in terms of estimated values and mk. Delta k plus vk, we estimate it, we get estimated parameters, uh, error terms and estimated values for mk. Uh, let's just underline them both here. And these we put together again into a matrix which is called M hat, which is now M1 hat, M2 hat, 
all the way to mk hat. Okay, so in here I illustrated it for running this first step for all elements, but if you, for instance, knew that it was only mk that uh, was potentially endogenous, you could do that only for mk. So, and uh, then we need to say what the second step is. After all, it's called two step, or two stage least squares. Okay, so what we then do is we basically estimate. the following model y equals m hat times gamma plus v by all s. Okay, what does that give us? That will, uh, if, we're, if we do this quite mechanically, we then estimate gamma hat and I, we shouldn't call it, we should give it We'll say two SLS for two stage least squares. But OLS replied to this equation means would just instead of M we use M hat. And otherwise everything else looks like uh, OLS. This is now our two stage least squares estimator for for gamma. So also, we've been asked uh, what are the properties for set. Properties for set, okay, and there are basically two. We need set to be correlated with M. In other words, what we want is in these first stage regressions we need that this set on the right hand side does explain variation in M1. Okay, otherwise what we get back as these explained uh, variables will basically have no variation. And the second step, the problem only ar arose because our M was correlated with U and here we need set to be uncorrelated. With, you, with the original error term. Okay, so um, how do we, so that was part, part B. Let's continue on to part C and uh, I shall again just paste in part C. Here we go. So demonstrate by the two-stage least squares estimator of gamma, which we just derived, is identical to the IV estimator, which we uh, which we have here. Your answer should also include the definition of uh, of p set. Now we know that p set is the projection matrix. And I expect you to know how a projection matrix is defined. So let's start with that. The projection matrix is of Z is Z times Z prime Z inverse times Z. So once we we know that, it's basically just a, a, a case of uh, some basic, basic algebra. The important thing to understand is that the projection matrix, let's say we are, uh, we are thinking of one of our first stage uh, regressions, M1 with Z, Delta 1, and we said V1, and then we said M1 hat, once we estimated Delta 1 by OLS, we got M1 hat. Now M1 hat can also be written as the projection matrix of Z times M1. Okay, so that was the a property of the projection matrix that uh, it would project uh, our M onto the space of the set. So that is for M1, 
Now, if we are talking about the entire matrix N, that relationship is going to look like this. Okay, so all if we just collect all our columns again, because that operation will basically operate on all individual columns. So it will have k times this operation going on. So this is now important because if we now start, we, we can now work this either way. We can either start with the IV estimator or we can, uh, we can start with the two-stage least squares estimator. So let's start with the two-stage least squares estimator. So we have gamma. Now that's not a really nice gamma. Let's do that again. Gamma hat two stage least square was m hat prime m hat inverse m hat prime times y. But now we know. Let's call that gamma. So now we can substitute this relationship in here and what we then get is the following m hat is going to be p set m but we have a prime and we have p set m again that inverse and we have p set m prime times y okay that is just replacing m hats with this relationship. Now we have, we'll take care of the primes here. Uh, we know P set M prime is the same as M prime P set prime times P set M and then we have M prime P set prime and Y. Now we are using a property of P set. P set as a projection matrix is uh, idempotent as P set is a projection matrix. It is uh, idempotent. What does that mean? That means that um, P set and it's also symmetric, so um, P set times P set is just P set again. So what we get is, um, so we should say and symmetric, and symmetric. So we get M prime times P set M inverse M prime P set Y. And here we have the solution because that is exactly uh, the gamma hat definition for the IV estimator which was given in part C of the question. Okay, so this was uh, part C of the question solved.